n'aura pas mis assez dans ce ballon et ça pourrait se terminer en pick six. Shen, Murphy, Benting a-t-il mis le pied il est marqué un peu court. Ouais, non, bah, je vais peut-être plus se concentrer un petit peu plus sur, sur la fin. En tout cas, l'interception est, est magnifique. Il est là, le big play défensif de Tampa. Cette équipe de Tampa Bay, cette fois, cette fois, on ne le reverra pas. Ouais. Le mouchoir de pénalité, mais attention, parce que Dion Harris ira jusqu'au bout, jusqu'à la terre promise. So the Stad Municipal is absolutely bouncing. But before we get out there and join them, we're going to say thank you to another patron. And this time it's an old friend of the channel, Neil Davidson, or as you probably know him, FM Stinger. Stinger started his own FM YouTube channel. Around about the same time I did has become a great pal over the last few months. He streams on Twitch as well. We're going to put links to all of his content channels down in the video description below. And we're going to try and say thank you by pulling off a miracle semi-final Champions League victory against arguably the biggest club in Europe. We've played just one more league game since that Grenoble Cup final victory. We won it. Olympic Lyonnais dropped points. They only drew their game, but it leaves them a point ahead of us with just three games of the season remaining. And straight after we play Real, our next game is against Lyon. The game that we did play... Well, we were pretty convincing, to be honest, although we only won the game 3-2. Montpellier scored pretty late on, but we looked all right in this game when we played a 4-3-1-2, which is the formation I'm thinking we're going to play today, because we need a goal. So if we have a look at the match stats from the Real game, it's going to seem like that we were completely outclassed. Honestly, that wasn't really the case. They had lots of shots, but they didn't really trouble us. In the first half, at least, we looked very comfortable playing a back three against their strikers. And they might have been having efforts, but they were from quite far out. And we didn't look like we were going to concede until that very soft penalty was given late in the game. And Madrid were able to sneak a 1-0 lead. The trade-off of us looking so solid was that we were a little bit toothless. They played a 4-3-1-2. And their four men in central midfield meant that we only had 37% of the ball. That would have been fine if we could have made our numerical advantage pay over on the flanks. But we couldn't create any overloads. We didn't counter with any regularity. And with only one man up top, we looked pretty toothless during that game. So... For this second leg, I'm thinking about matching Real up. Now this is probably madness, because if we concede a goal, we're out, because we're not going to score three against Real Madrid. We need to score two on the night just to go through. We need to score one just to have dreams of extra time. But I don't see us getting two goals playing the five at the back system against Real Madrid. We just didn't look like we were going to create a chance, never mind a goal. Playing that way in the first leg. We've got the options to switch to it if we need to. We've got Lansana Bar on the bench, although Lansana has not been playing very well at all ever since he was sent off in that Valencia game earlier in the competition. Because since then he's been suspended, he's come back in the team and he's done little more than get sixes and get substituted when he has been picked. So... He's going to be on the bench for us, but we're going to play a 4-3-1-2. The formation we're expecting Real to play as well. It means that we can get some of our dangerous players into the side. Carvot will still be there, but rather than a winger, he'll be a Mazala drifting out wide. Sturvold scored twice for us in the last game against Montpellier. We know Salim Chan is our best player and he's valued at £55 million. And I think he could get in the Real Madrid squad. It would also mean... We can get two strikers in for this game. The man that scored the winner in the cup final, Maxi Mallet, has got good pace, quick enough and a good enough finisher, hopefully to trouble Real. And even though he's not really back to full fitness, Espin Larson Pleem is becoming a key man for us. That acceleration, coupled with a decent bit of finishing, means that he is going to be starting in a Champions League semi-final, having missed... The first leg through injury. This is a big ask. This could all well end in the opening minute when Real score that crucial away goal. 
But let's be honest, who had a Champions League semi-final against Real Madrid on their radar at the start of the season? I know that I didn't, and if we could pull this off, this is Ultimate FM21 Redemption. Okay, we're underway. We know that this is a tall order, not made any easier, by the way, than the, the fact that Infamara BA is out for today's game as well. He's probably going to miss the rest of the season. It means we've got Gino Delmar playing in midfield. I think he's only 18 years old. He's playing against Real Madrid in a Champions League semi, but the dream is alive after 10 minutes. Real Madrid haven't had an effort yet, but now... They do have a throw in. We're hoping that these attacking highlights lead to us robbing the ball and maybe breaking on them because we've got two men up front now. And if we could have got the ball through to them, they might have been in on goal. But Carvot gives the ball back to Madrid and now we're looking to build again. We've won it back. Sturvold. He's hit Larson Pleem. Can he dance past his man? He can't, but he's fired in an effort. And that was at least a little warning shot across the bows to Ray Allen. We're into the highlights again. Here's Larson Pleem again. He's in again. He has struck a fierce effort. Their goalie has been tested twice inside 14 minutes. And we've got the corner to come. Is After a bright start, we've still only had the two shots. Although this is pretty much what the first leg was like. It's not like Real Madrid have threatened us and Julie in this first half. We're going to need more in the second period. Look at the XG. We're not out of this. One goal and this tie changes. OK, we're back underway. Morton Sturvold has a knock. He says he reckons he can run it off. His fitness is low. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm hoping it's going to recover. Otherwise, we're looking at bringing Paul Runnigan on. In a Champions League semi-final. There's a sentence nobody ever thought. They would be saying. We're up to 48 minutes. Sturvold doesn't seem to have recovered much of his fitness. As Salim Chan sends a free kick effort wide. It might be. That we're bringing Runnigan on. The other midfielder we have on the bench is Hartman. But he's carrying a knock as well. That's the player we would prefer to bring on. But I think fitness is going to be needed. Especially if. We can grab an equaliser and maybe force extra time. We're going to make that change. Sturvold's going to come off. Runnigan is going to come on. You never know. It's a time for heroes, maybe. Even a sub-zero one. Okay, change made. But if this goes much further at some point, we're going to have to think about going more attacking because we need a goal. At the moment, it seems to be Real Madrid that are doing more of the pressing than us. Have they been given another soft penalty? Dear Lord, best case scenario, this is a free kick on the edge of the box. The referee is doing the arced run of doom over to the monitor. Don't give Real another soft penalty, please. What's he doing? He's taking his time. No penalty, thank you. But they have been given a free kick that didn't even look like a foul. We've managed to get the ball clear temporarily. They've got it back in again. Bruno Nix has made a smart save at his near post. We need to do something a little bit more. We're going to pause the game. We're not. We've got a free kick. Cross everything. Can Salim Chan curl us back into the match? He can't even get it up and over the wall. He's still got the ball. But we're building from deep and now we're going to have to pause. We're going to go and see whether there's something we can do to try and force an opening. Because at the moment... It looks like we could be going out of this tie. Okay, we've made some changes. We've gone 4-2-4. We don't have an awful lot more we can throw at this. We've got a highlight. We're going to have to start from deep if it's one for us because we're all the way back with Bruno Nix in goal. We've got 15 minutes here. I thought we were going to get thumped in the first leg and we were still in it. I thought Madrid would score in the first half and we're still in it. We're still left with a chance of glory with 15 minutes to go. And here's one of our sub-zero heroes. Because Larson Pleem's in. And he's been tackled. And they're consulting VAR. And I don't think this looked like a penalty. If this is given. This is as soft as the one that they were awarded in the first leg. But my goodness. What pressure on the taker if this is given. We've still got 40 minutes to go. Are we going to be awarded a pen? This could change everything. This could be full redemption. 
and he has given it and he has given it. We've got a penalty against Real Madrid and it's going to be Lansana Bar. He missed his last one. He's tucked this one away to lose a drawing with Real Madrid in the semi-final of the Champions League. Barcelona await in the final, by the way. He's gone straight down the middle. And time to calm, time to calm, because we are playing a very attacking formation now. I think we should probably continue to go for the jugular, but maybe not quite on the mentality that we were on. Give me a second. We're going to make some tweaks. We've got 13 minutes to score a second against Real Madrid and set up a Champions League final. OK, we're back underway. We're heading towards the final 10 minutes of the game. We've got tired players. I know that. And we've also got players who really, really are not playing that well at all. But I know that they've got a moment of magic in them. Here's Salim Chan not having his best afternoon. But could he just create a little chance for us? He's going. Can he feed someone? He's had a shot. And I think that could have been the worst thing he could have done. Because now we're vulnerable to the counter. We've won it back though. We've got two men in midfield. And one of them is Paul Ropey Runnigan. A player who really wants to be a striker. And while we commentate, this highlight goes on and Real Madrid are looking mean. They're looking like they want to get this tie done before we get into extra time. And they're through a goal and we're not going to come back from this. The away goal would be the killer blow. And now they've got a free kick. And the killer blow, it is. Verandas has curled Madrid and this is just what the big teams do. They give you that glimmer of hope. And then how has that curled in? We don't even have a wall for that. And he's curled it all the way home. We've gone. Very attacking. We need to score twice. There's no more extra time now. That's not going to happen. We need to score two goals. We've got five minutes. We're playing a 4-2-4. Four, four, and we've won a corner. If we could just rein in from a corner. If big Frankie Nicks could get on the end of one. There's a chance. There is Frankie. Frankie's hit the bar. We called it. He was the man to aim for. He's hit the bar. The highlight continues though. We've gone in again. and We can't get on the end of it. Now we've got a counter of our own to deal with. If this goes in, it really is game over. And he's dinked it. And it has gone in. And now we're looking to score three goals in five minutes against Real Madrid. And my dreams are now lying on the floor in tatters. I thought Frankie Nix might have just set up a grandstand finish to the game. Instead, former Premier League player Svetislav Todorov, formerly of Portsmouth, I think he's in his early 60s now, has dinked one over. We're going to go in and we're going to make one final sub. We perhaps need to save Carvot for another fight because we've still got Champions League qualification to try and secure in the league. But this game is done. And this looks like the last knockings of the game. It means that our time in Toulouse is essentially up. We've got two, three more games left in the league where we need to try and qualify for Champions League football for next season. And then our thoughts are turning to where we're going to move to next. We've not completely discounted. Staying at Toulouse, although all there's left to really play for now would be winning the Champions League and trying I'm trying to win the French title for a second time. I'm thinking the greater challenge is to go and find another club out there. Maybe one that's in the doldrums a little bit. Maybe a sleeping giant that we could try and resuscitate to see whether oh, that's alienated the squad and to see whether that might be a better challenge that might be able to seal us a little bit more redemption. I think getting all the way to a Champions League semi-final with a club that was in League 2 when we took them over, well, that's redemption enough. And we're certainly leaving the club in a better financial position than when we arrive because they've got nearly 50 million in the bank. We're going to see you for the very last game of the season where we're going to be assessing our time in Toulouse Having a good old think about what comes next. I think what we've done at Toulouse sets us up for FM21 Redemption. But maybe we need to go and prove ourselves at one more club.